Oh, it's been a minute since we've been uh, messing around with this, this little setup. Uh, yeah, this follow-up took a lot longer than I'd planned, but here we are. So let's, uh, let's get to work. This video is brought to you by Autonomous. If you're like me, you've been spending way too much time sitting in a gaming chair at your desk. And I get it, you know, gaming chairs, they seem cool at least at first, but wow, are they, they horrible to sit in. At least most of them. It's time to upgrade. I have, and the chair I landed on is the Ergo Chair 2 by Autonomous. The Ergo Chair 2 has a breathable back, comfortable seat with seating dimensions of 20 inches by 20 inches and supports up to 350 pounds. The backrest can be tilted up to 20 degrees and the seat height is adjustable from 18 to 20 inches. The Ergo Chair 2 comes in 6 colors and has a 2 year warranty with a 30 day trial. And the best part though, is that the Ergo Chair 2 has all the value of other great Ergo Chair brands without the insanely overpriced price tag. And fun fact, if you use the link in the description below and my code Major Hardware, you can get 8% off. Come on, it's obvious. It's time to upgrade your chair. Question one, do you remember what this even is? If not, this is a plastic radiator and we made it in a video a while ago on the Photon Mono SC. And the question was is, if you, well one, can you 3D print a radiator and will it hold water? Yeah, and surprisingly, this is actually the same water that it had in it when we made the video. It's, I threw it in a room over there and it's actually still holding water, which is surprising in and of itself. And then two, does it work? And it does, it's not like the best, but it did keep the system from thermally throttling, which I thought was pretty impressive. And then after that video went live, a lot of you guys asked me, now if you were to 3D print that again and then put something like thermally conductive in it, would it, would it work better? Good question. And that's what we're going to find out today because I have copper powder, which is exactly what it sounds like. And we're going to 3D print three new radiators, one in just plastic like this one, uh, two with a little bit of copper powder, and then three with as much copper powder as we can try to get away with before it like tries to settle out. And then we're going to see if they get any better, any worse, or no change. And we're going to make a, we're going to design a new radiator because this is, this was kind of just modeled after the one I had just to make it look similar. And we don't need to be that aggressive. We just need something that will pass water through some tubes in front of a fan to prop it. And this time around, we're gonna use the Elegoo Saturn to print our radiator, which I hope will make our lives a little easier given we have a much larger build volume this time around. Also, I took it out of the box and look at this cool little uh, little vinyl they put on there. It says major hardware. Nice. I do like it. Didn't know they were gonna do that, but that's cool. And I'm excited to use this thing because it's, it's a lot larger than like a, like a Mars or the Photon Mono SE. And when we printed this last time in that littler printer, we were pretty limited to how we were able to position the radiator. But with this guy, we got a little more space. We hopefully can optimize that angle a little better. And in the future, we have a lot more space for activities for other projects. But right now we need to make a new radiator that's simpler than that one and cooler.
so we're making progress, to say the least. The, the radiator thingy is now printed. It's watertight. There's water in it now. Working just fine, at least when it comes to moving water through it. Now, this isn't the one that you saw me design and print in the time lapse. That one had a bit of DLAM on these bends, and then after I sealed it up, the passages were just a little too small and too restrictive to the flow, so I opened them up by another mill, took them from four to three, and it seems to work a lot better. Also, I cut it in, I cut it down a little bit to make it 120 millimeters wide, just so I could print it flat up against the build plate of the Saturn, and that took the print time from eight and a half hours to one and a half hours, which is much, much, much nicer. But now the tricky part. So what I think we're gonna do is take the reservoir, dump it in this little glass jug, and then probably use maybe half a tablespoon of copper powder, mix it in there, and see if we can get a print to work with just that much copper powder. My fear being that it's going to separate out given copper kind of heavy, uh, and then it's just not gonna print. But if we can get it to print with just a little copper powder, then we'll do another one after that uh, with a bit more, and we'll kind of just go from there. So let's see if it works. Oh, so the fear we had of the the copper powder separating out of the resin over time looks to be founded. You can actually look in the tank right now and see an outline of the radiator we just printed. Now, granted, it is the next day, so it's had quite a bit of time to separate out. But I guess if you look at what we printed, first off, it, it printed well, so it didn't get clogged up or anything like that. It looks like it came out pretty decent, and it does seem to have an orange tint to it, which makes me think that there is copper within the print. So let me get it out of this and cleaned up, and we'll see just how much, if any, copper powder made it into our little radiator here. It did actually, you know, spread a little bit of copper powder throughout the entire print. Now there is more, it seems, on the bottom or the first initial layers, but I can see it all the way through, and we didn't use that much. But it is there, and I wonder, will it make a difference? Uh, we're gonna test it on my i7 7700K, and I'm gonna downclock it to 4.5 gigahertz, because I know 4.9 will just burn these up. There's no chance uh, that that's ever gonna work, but we'll run it at 4.5. I'm gonna run it for an entire hour to make sure that the system is entirely heat soaked, and we'll see if there's a difference between this goofy plastic radiator and then this goofy plastic radiator with a little bit of copper powder. Huh. So starting with the plastic radiator, the room temperature was 20.1. The average temperature settled in at 90.3, giving us a delta of 70.2, and we saw a maximum temperature of 99 degrees. Now there's no getting around it. 99 degrees is pretty toasty for a max temperature, but throughout the run, the average temperature was in a zone more acceptable, meaning that this, although it doesn't really look like a radiator, it is functioning like one, keeping the CPU cool enough to perform the IDA64 stress test for an entire hour without thermally throttling. Question is, is a little bit of copper going to make that any better? So the same design, but this time with a little bit of copper powder, had a room temperature of 19.7, an average temperature of 19.5, giving us a delta of 70.8, and again we saw a max temperature of 99, meaning that pretty much these performed uh, identically. You could say that this one maybe did a little worse, but in the grand scheme of things, that's margin of error, and essentially they came out with the same exact, the same exact numbers. They kept it from throttling, but they, they weren't what you'd call, you would call good. But once if we step it up uh, a little bit, once if we add a bit more copper. Initially we, we were a little light because we were afraid it wouldn't print, but it printed, so let's go big. Now, I'm gonna be honest, I, I expected to mix the copper resin slurry together and then pour the mud into the you know, printer, kind of just as a meme, because I, I, there was no way, in my mind, there was no way that that giant slurry of copper was gonna print. I expected it just to spit out like a, a block of plastic, but I'm happy to report that was not the case. It actually printed 
it printed pretty good. It had a little bit of issues. There were some holes to deal with, but in the end, it looks the same, but darker colored. And there's no doubt that this radiator has much more copper within it than, well, that one doesn't have any, but this one. The question is though, is all that effort worth anything? Will this do any better than these two plastic ones? So the plastic radiator with the high concentration of copper powder had a room temperature of 20.2. It had an average temperature of 86.8, .8, giving us a delta of 66.6, .6, and the maximum temperature this time around was 96 degrees. And I didn't see that coming. I don't know about you guys, but after running this one and seeing it do a little bit worse, if not the same, I was like, well, this is probably gonna be hot garbage, but it wasn't. It was actually a bit better and it seems a bit suspect to me. So I decided to run the test uh, again to see if it would just kind of slowly climb into infinity and beyond. But rather than shut it all down and let everything go back to room temperature and then restart the test, I just decided, let's just, uh, let's just keep going. So I hit clear, start another timer, and we ran for a second hour. And surprisingly, in the second hour, the room temperature dropped a little bit to 20 degrees. The average temperature climbed just a hair to 89.4, and the maximum stayed below 99 at 98 degrees, giving us a delta of 69.4. And I don't know about you, but I think that means that copper-infused resin does better than just resin. And keep in mind, this is, a, this is a hot garbage interpretation of a radiator. I essentially just made some squiggly lines and ran fluid through it behind a fan and it worked. And when you put copper in it, although it was a bit of a mess to deal with, it worked better. Now I would still recommend using a normal radiator from like EK or a reputable brand than printing one yourself. But in a jam, if you wanted to, you could do it at your own risk, but it was fun. What else should we do with a uh, I got a lot of this copper powder left. If you have any ideas for what we should do with it next, let me know. I'll give it a shot.